vlog three. Let's get it. Columbine, rubber fire. Baby, shake that ass, shake that pumpkin pie. Twin sister, side by side. Shake it side by side, twin sister, side by side. Shake it side by side. MGM National Harbor 1 3, you already know. Got new action, new hands, new graphics for the vlog. First couple hands I sit down, I notice the player across the table from me is an older man, and he's telling the woman that's sitting next to him about homes that he's bought and how much he sold those homes for. And this has gone on for, I would say, about 10 minutes, and the woman has not said a single word. So he says something like, oh, back in 2002, I bought this little guy, and then he shows her a photo on his phone. For a hundred thousand, just sold last year for five hundred twenty-two thousand. Three years ago, bought this one for eighty-eight, sold it for two thirty-six, and on and on and on. So from now on, I'm gonna call him Mansion Guy. First hand, pick up Ace King. Action was really good, so I decided to switch up the felt and instead put a photo of the Infinity Action Pool. Make it thirty dollars. Pre seems like a good table. One collar, just mansion man. The flop does not give us an ace or a king, but mansion man is out of position, and dark bets seven dollars into the pot. I don't have a pair, but I have ace high here and just call. Now before the turn card even comes out, mansion man decides that he is going to bet all of his stack a hundred fifty dollars before the turn card is even flipped over. I thought this was very confusing, and I saw in about the five previous hands or so that Mansion Man was betting a lot. He would value bet thin and also bluff a lot. Those two combined meant that he was probably betting about 80% of the time. A player betting this much who's betting this frequently on this board, I think ace high is going to be good a lot here. So I just call it off. 2x pot, I think it's weighted toward a bluff we don't make a pair and he flips over that 10-9 so we are off to a very hot start next villain is sitting down directly on my left and i've been talking to him a bit and he sees when he just sits down a 10-10-2 flop and he says ah doyle would be happy so i can tell this dude follows poker more than the average one three player and then he mentions that he used to play uh, small middle stakes uh, for a living way back. So that's a good thing to keep in mind before I'm up against him in the next hand. I'll call him Doyle Jr. I've won a few small pots since the last hand, and then I pick up bullets in the next hand in middle position. Under the gun plus one, I make a 25 for the flop, and I think this is actually a slight sizing mistake because at this table, 30 was the better size. Get three other callers, one of them being Doyle Jr. himself, and take a flop. Flop comes down, jack 3-5 rainbow, clean flop. So I bet 75 into the flop. Brrr. Doyle, who's sitting on my left, raises to 175. I make the call. Seems like an extremely dry board. The only thing beating me right now is basically sets. If he says that he used to play pro, then I would think that he would not play any 3-5, jack-5, jack-3. Just me and Doyle Jr. now. After a 9 of hearts rolls off, I just check, given that he raised the flop, and he jams 325 into the pot. So it's a tough spot. It's a tough spot. He just has a set here, or he doesn't have a set here. So I took the fact that the jack was one of the sets that he could have. I discount pocket jacks because I think if he's good he would raise my open with pocket jacks so that means he either has pocket threes or pocket fives that's just six combinations I decide you know what you got it or you don't got it I'll just stick it and see what happens so I make the call and he flips over that AK AK got nothing on bullets hard jab stepping Pulls back, long two, got it! 40 
one for James Harden. Puts his team up eight. Whatever his strategy was, I'll take the double up. On to the next hand. Next hand, I decide to open king nine of spades from the hijack. Decent suited hand from late position. Get one caller, and it's the cooler dude. So the player in this hand is extremely on tilt. He's lost a couple consecutive hands, and he says that every single one of them was a cooler. And he flips his hand over each time. I can tell that this player has not been playing very much poker because the hands that he was showing down were not coolers. The player's definitely on tilt, has rebought for 500. He's the only caller, and we take a flop. Queen 10 of 5 with a diamond draw. Don't have any diamonds. He could, though. Decide to bet out with my overcard and gut shot. If he has a queen, it's not so bad. If he has a flush draw, great. So I bet out 30, and he makes the call. Turn seems like a pretty fair card. It's the jack of spades. Doesn't complete the flush draw, but gives us the straight. I bet 100 into the pot, which is about 100. Bit of an overbet, but I think this dude is pretty on tilt. He's going to call off with a queen, and he's going to call off with a flush draw. So I made my size pretty large here because I don't think he's going to be too elastic in this situation. And he makes the call again. River brings an offsuit too. Beautiful run out. So this time I decide there's only one price that would be good here and ship it for about 250 into about 300. He thinks about it for a while and makes the fold. So we are running it up here. A little while later I look down at more women than I've ever seen play poker. For real though, zero registered female viewers. See that Mansion Man has made it 14, so I make a 65, and just Mansion Man calls. Just us two again. I'm looking for a home. Two, three, floor, two clubs on the flop. Seems pretty good to me. So I bet out 100, and Mansion Man makes the call. Turn brings a six of clubs. Pretty bad card for me. And I decide to check it. Planning on probably check calling one street. Mansion Man is pretty aggressive, so I believe he'd be able to take a stab with a hand that is not a flush or a straight here. And he just decides to check. So now I'm feeling like I still have the best hand a large portion of the time. Queen of Clubs on the river. Not a good set to have, though. Hand strength has gone down considerably since the flop. So I decided to check one more time, and he checks back, and we're good. Pocket nine is now early position. I make a 25, and the caller is Doyle Jr., our favorite very professional pro player. Doyle Jr. has just rebought for the maximum, 500. Very safe flop for us, 8-2-2, two, two, no flush draw. So I bet out 50 and 45. This bet size I do not like too much. I think this was kind of a spaz move that I liked the flop so much because I think for a price of 50 into 45 here, smaller pocket pairs are going to fold. Everything between sevens and threes is probably going to fold here, and I want those to call one street. Should be comfortably ahead here. Can go a little bit smaller. And he makes the call. Turn comes queen. I bet out again. This time 65 into 145. This was a stupidly sized bet. I do not know why I sized so small. That was definitely another mistake. I think that at this point, the likelihood that he has an 8 is reasonable, and pocket pairs are going to show up here sometimes. I don't think he has too many queens here, because I don't think he plays queen 8. Only ace queen might call flop. I think king queen is probably too weak to just float and see what happens. So he has some ace queens here, but I wasn't too worried about it. I bet out again, 65, and he makes the call. When he makes this call, I think that he has a two a reasonable proportion of the time now. River comes the very fair nine of hearts. So we make the full boat house, and I decide to check it because I think that any eight is going to fold to one more bet, and also the chances that he has a two here are pretty decent, and a two is definitely gonna bet out. So I check. He bets 85, and I raise all in for 275 total. And he thinks about it for a while, and he calls. He actually had ace-queen here. So I think, uh, I think we're going to take it down. Another day, another hand. Ace-queen offsuit, late position. 
and I see a player from Under the Gun plus one make it 20. I was a little bit confused what to do now because this player was not raising that much preflop. Thought a fold would be too nitty and a call would leave me a little bit lost as to where I was. So I make it 60. I figure I have position and he might fold some of his hands here and he makes the call. When he makes this call, I put him on a pretty narrow range given that his opening frequency was pretty low. Flop comes ace three five. The only hand that I'm really worried about here is ace king. I feel like for someone who's pretty pre-flop passive, you would definitely just flat ace king to a three bet here. So I decide I can probably get a couple streets of value from a worse ace in this situation, which he should have a bunch of the time. He checks and I check it back. Pretty safe board, not really worried about too many cards coming through. Want to give some of those middling pocket pairs, like maybe nines, tens, jacks, more confidence in case he would have folded those on the flop. Turn comes with jack of spades. Now there is a flush draw. He checks again, and now I am pretty confident I am ahead. So I bet 65, and he makes the call. River is a nine of spades, completing the backdoor flush, and he checks a third time. I made a pretty nitty check back here. I think that a lot of the time, given my preflop estimate, he should have a worse ace here. And ace king much less the time than he has a worse ace. Pretty nitty check back. Wasn't sure about this. Thought that if he had ace jack, it just made two pair. And I'm not sure if he even calls ace 10 to a three bet. So... It was a pretty nitty move. Anyway, he does end up here with Ace King, so I did make the okay read. Not sure about this play particularly. Look who it is. House Dude. House Dude makes a 19. I make a call with pocket sevens. Just us two to the flop. Flop comes pretty terrible. Ace Jack four with two hearts. I have one heart, but he just checks. And because he was betting about 80% of the time, I think that his checks must have been pretty weak. He would bet, if he's betting 80% of the time, he has to be betting flush draws and ace, and I think he even has to bet a jack here. So when he doesn't bet here, I feel pretty good about the hand now. Turn brings the eight of hearts, one more over card, and he bets 30 now. With one heart, I make the call, also thinking that pocket sevens is going to be good uh, some of the time here. He may just be taking a stab now that he saw that I checked back flop. River is a six of clubs and he bets 65 and I just make the snap call because there's no way he has an ace here because an ace would have bet flop. Hearts would have bet flop. A jack might play like this and eight's not going two streets. That leaves me with a call as the simplest answer. I also snap call because when he had been bluffing, he would instantly muck. When he got called, he would immediately throw his hands in the muck, so I thought that if he happened to be bluffing with an 8, I really wanted to get that snap muck because I wasn't sure if he would consider bluffing with an 8 somehow in his hand. So anyway, I make the snap call, and he does immediately muck his hand, so we're going to scoop this one. Pre-flop action! Two limpers. Late position. I have ace 8 of clubs. I make a 25. First limper calls. Mansion Man comes in with the limp, re-raise all in to 115. Mansion Man, no, it's gonna be a long, long time. I isolate by raising a 250, thinking that the caller who called 25 is never calling 250 here. And of course, he folds. Hello. Hello. Our menu options may have changed. Hello. Call I'm playing 1-3 and I just made a 250 with a say. Ace A. I'm not Sorry, even good at poker. I didn't quite get that. I immediately flip over my Ace Eight of Clubs, and Mansion Man does not show his hand. We get a run of Jack Nine Seven Four Two. He mucks, so I win without hitting anything here. Our next villain, that is sitting two seats to my right, is an extremely tilted, extremely aggressive player. He has been getting very upset when people call his bluffs. And he keeps on shouting at the table and saying things like, how did you just call me with whatever they called him with? He has had some considerable sizing tells when he's bluffing, he bets huge. And when he actually has something, he bets small. Very straightforward. This man limps in late position. I make it 17 with 
35 of spades. This is a terrible play. Do not try this at home. Very splashy table. This is not a good hand. I'm not even, I'm in late position, but I'm not even on the button. Don't do this. Both blinds call and angry man calls. Take it four ways, the flop. Flop comes, king nine six, both blinds check, angry man checks, and I just check behind. I think with three other people, fold equity here is gonna be very low. One of them likely has a king. That Spades turns out, got that five high flush. This is why three five of spades is a premium hand. Blinds check, angry guy bets out 30 into about 60. And I make the call thinking that he's gonna be bluffing here a lot and I wanna give him an opportunity to fire on the river too. So the river comes a terrible card. It comes the 10 of spades, so now any higher spade is beating us. But when he bets 125, I make the snap call. He's betting more than pot in a situation where if he had the nuts, there's not too much worse that can call you. With him being so aggressive, he was also aggressive pre-flop. I think that with a good ace high, he would be opening. And he would probably also open anything higher than maybe queen nine. Jack X hands would open too. I think anything better than jack 10. Anyway, after the snap call, the guy shows me a nine. So that's not gonna cut it. I show the three five, get the whole Phil Helm youth. How'd you call me down with just a five high flush? Oh, it was so good. It was so good. Angry Man has rebought, and I have pocket fours in late position. Angry Man makes it $8 pre flop. I call. Two other people also call. Flop is exactly what we're looking for. Flop is queen jack four, queen jack of spades. Angry Man bets 35 into the pot of 30. While he is betting over pot, and that is his typical size when he's bluffing, I put in a raise here because there is a flush draw. He's gonna have queen jack here sometimes. He's gonna have queen here sometimes. So I wanna get value out of all these hands. So I make it 100 and he just calls. Now, I'm not sure if this is the best play. With a player as aggressive as he is, I think I might actually better opt for a flop call and then wait for him to fire again on the turn before raising and I'd probably raise any turn in this situation. After he calls the flop, we get a spade on the turn. Spades and though. He checks. I now rip it for 250 on the turn. This is what I intended on doing when I raised flop. If he has a queen, this is not a good run out. And if he has spades, he's ahead. So I'm not so sure about my play on these two streets. Don't think I played this one too great. Anyway, he decides on thinking about it for a while and making the fold. And that wraps up the session. Pretty good one this time. <laughs> I lost them. No, if he was a fish, oh, then I might call, but he's, he's an uber genius and he knows to reverse it, but maybe he reverses it twice and it's back to... I'm supposed to call. He lost maybe. the audience at hello. Now that I got a couple vlogs in, I decided to start showing you guys what my poker stats looked like. So, since the start of the vlog, I'm going to be taking much more careful track of what my plus minus and hours spent on poker are. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next vlog.